Every positive thought is a silent prayer which will change our lives. I request all the dignitaries and the gathering to rise for a silent prayer for world peace. Thank you. A very good morning to one and all present here. We would start the program with a prayer song. Vela mugat vinayagane Vandarul vaigane nayagane Vigna nivarana dayagane Vidnamarul gana nayakane Sanni di vande nundane Kandin nunnavane Gana 
நாயகனே அதி முக பெருமானுந்த நடியேன் நித்தமருள் கணநாயகனே 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 Lighting lamps are God's way of telling us that there will always be light to drive away darkness. I now request the dictaries on the dais to light the kuttavalaku. Thank you. May I now request Ms. Padma Venkatraman, President of Women's Indian Association, to welcome the gathering. Good morning, Vanakkam, <clears throat> and a happy Women's Day. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to one and all. The WA is organizing the seminar on communal harmony and uh, national integration. And uh, this is sponsored by 
National Foundation for Communal Harmony and uh, National Integration. Actually, uh, the important people from the organization were planning to come here. In the last minute, there was some government uh, appointment was given, and they are not able to join us here. But uh, Mr. Pan said, uh, you please organize one more sugar program in May or June. Uh, we will definitely we would like to come and join you in Chennai. But of course, May and June is not the right time for is not the right time in Chennai. But anyway, I think uh, we will welcome them. We thank them for giving us this opportunity. I would like to thank All India Women's Conference for giving us this uh, opportunity to organize this seminar, the seminar in uh, Chennai. Uh, practically, we are. This is the first, uh, you know, physical program that we are organizing after two years. So the word webinar keep coming up. So, and we would. According to our ancient tradition, we all say uh, that in India, we used to believe that the entire world is one family. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. So we will have to cherish that uh, concept and take it forward for the future generation. So that's the whole idea of this conference. Uh, because um, we need it all the more around this time, because whether there is a lot of turbulence going on in the world. There should be harmony and peace. That's the most important thing for any development of work or uh, any other you know, progress in life. It's my great pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to um, Ms. Sheila Kakdeji. She's the president of All India Women's Conference. <laughs> she has created history and she will go down in the history of All India Women's Conference for her brilliant idea of you know, uh, tracing the history of past history of uh, uh, AWC by walking through the life and achievement of our, of our past presidents. It's so inspiring and it's motivational. Thank you, Sheila Ji, for this wonderful idea. And uh, we have Dr. Manju Kak, member in charge of National Integration and Communal Harmony. She has been a guiding force for organizing seminar in Chennai. Manjuji is a writer, historian, nature lover, and many, many more, all rolled into one. She is passionately uh, committed to the cause of promoting communal harmony and uh, the cause of promoting communal harmony and peace through webinars and seminars throughout India, through the all branches of All India Women's Conference. Thank you, Manji. We extend a very warm welcome to you. I am delighted to extend a special welcome to Dr. Nandita Krishna. Dr. Nandita is a director of uh, CPR Foundation. She's a research scholar, environmentalist. She promotes all her all her arts and our culture. And uh, you know, she has won several awards. I would say the several awards have been honored by being conferred on her. That's how I look at it. She's uh, so committed to the cause of environment and preserving our culture. Uh, thank you very much uh, for accepting to deliver keynote address, uh, Dr. Nandita. And we are so proud that she is our patron. We are so happy to welcome Ms. Ashita, Vice President, All India Women's Conference. We are delighted to have you with us, Ashita. Thank you for participating and encouraging in all our programs. Whenever she is in Chennai, she never fails to uh, attend the program and uh, encourage us. Thank you, Ashita. It's my immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to Dr. Lata Rajendran. I don't know whether I can welcome her to her own home. <laughs> this is her home, but anyway. And Dr. Lata is so generous, offering not only this hall, um, but you know, all her staff, all her uh, teachers and the principal and the students, everybody is so cooperative that we can't believe we couldn't have organized such a beautiful uh, seminar without their help. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lata Rajendran. And I, I really appreciate Dr. Lata Rajendran because you know it's the most difficult job, the hearing and the speech impaired children. I've seen 
how they are trained in the, in the school. And uh, they have all sorts of equipment, and the children are so cheerful. Not only that, after that training, she's trying to uh, you know, integrate them into the mainstream by uh, taking some of the children, some of the girls, in this college. That's a wonderful work. We really thank you for uh, joining us today, Dr. I consider this a great honor to welcome Ms. Bhartavi Devendra, Honorary Secretary WAA, and a senior member with vast knowledge of uh, in administration. Thank you so much, Madam. And a special welcome to Dr. Bhuma, our treasurer. She is a treasurer of WAA. That, uh, that explains everything. <laughs> I'm so happy to welcome the art. I am also the award winners will be coming probably later, or, or they here. Uh, so we welcome them also and uh, congratulate them for winning the award. And um, I'm so happy to welcome the, all the artists from the Indian Museum of Peoples. Uh, we have Narikuravas. Are they around? Yeah. We have Narikuravas, and uh, they have brought beautiful garlands, you know, the beads. And, uh, and also, uh, we have um, Ms. Mange Karti has organized this folk uh, dance, and uh, that's also people from. The, you know, what we call poikal gudre, that is uh, the man will be standing inside the house like king and then dancing. This is a very uh, typical folk, uh, focal, uh, folk art. And then another one is will like, a, like a peacock. These are all from the down south, Tanjavur. And I am sure they will take the message to the far corners of our state because we have told them that today the message is to take uh, communal harmony and national integration and peace to everybody. Wherever they go, this is the best media to reach out to whatever we want to uh, give message to people. So we hope that uh, we will accomplish in what we are trying to do. And also, we have um, from differently abled uh, group. We have uh, some people. They are going to perform, and of course, our enthusiastic members of WIA. They are also going to perform today. And uh, then one youth group, uh, head by Mr. Jai Chandran. Uh, we will have a play, and uh, we welcome you also. And we welcome everyone who is participating uh, in the cultural program. And our cultural program, the whole thing will uh, be depicting the communal harmony, the message that we want to reach it out to the uh, people at large. The real spirit of this great land will ever remain with harmony and humanism. Wish you all a pleasant day. Once again, I extend a very warm welcome and welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Ms. M. Bhargavi Devendra, Honorable Secretary, Women India Association to enlighten us about the Women's Indian Association involvement on national integration and communal harmony. The All India Women's Conference President, Srimati Shilaji, Srimati Manjuka, our President, uh, Srimati Padma Venkatraman, and our Patron, Mrs. Nandika, Nandika Krishna, and uh, Srimati Lata Rajendran, our Treasurer, Bhuma Srinivasan, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Ashita from AIWC and our members from uh, Ch Chennai, students of this uh, esteemed college and invitees. I would like to first say happy Women's Day because yesterday we had celebrated the Women's Day and today we are going to speak about uh, 
in a communal harmony and national integration, which is very, very important because the world is facing two disasters. One is climate change, second is uh, communal harmony. As I have been asked to say about uh, WNU's uh, involvement in communal harmony and natural integration, I would like to say WAA was started in the year 1917 by a group of ladies and uh, Dr. Annie Vincent took the lead to form the organization. She was an Irish lady who also Margaret Curzon's uh, an Irish person. They were joined by Sarojini Naidu, Sarla Bai Nayak, Srirangamma, Mrs. Lazarus, Hira Bai Tata, Begum Ansari Uhani, Lady Sadashiva Iyer, Mrs. Ranade, Mrs. Sarala Devi Choudhury, and others. The architects not only belong to India, but different nations and communities. This shows that Women's Indian Association is not only predict communal harmony, but also national integration as members belong to different uh, states. Today, the Women's Indian Association have members in our affiliated branches. Persons belong to different communities. Even our staff of Women's Indian Association also belong to different communities. To indicate uh, communal harmony, we have a Hindu temple at our premises and at our recreation hall, symbols of national and uh, symbols of uh, all religions. Our uh, hostel inmates, inmates and other students uh, uh, offer prayers according to their religion. This indicates the communal harmony it is, uh, is practiced by Women's India Association fulfilling the objects of national foundation of communal harmony. And uh, to just to show how even our logo indicates communal harmony and national integration, I would like, like to inform you. Our logo represents the ideal influence of women, which is the object of our association to make an actually in every detail of daily life in every part of India, the work, began, the work has begun in Madras Presidency, the place of women's feet. But its life, life force, springs from re religion. Her art, heart is in the region of Banaras. And its intellect must be as clear and cool as Himalayan regions into which rises her head. Serene and self, reliant must stand each member with hands stretched to sisters and brothers, uh, both in east and west, to give them from her act, uh, active right hand <coughs> beauty and prosperity, representing by a lotus, the flower that bears within itself male and female qualities equally. And from the lamp in her left hand to extend a steady flame of inspiration which will light the fire of the united life of man and woman, the fire of devotion to our sacred religion and love of humanity, the fire of patriotism, the fire of zeal and reform. Thus she represents religion, knowledge, organization, service, beauty, prosperity, inspiration and cooperation all offered to Mother India by each of her daughters. I am really honored for the opportunity provided. As per the National Integration Women's Indian Association is the mother of All India Women's Conference and All India Women's Conference is the representation of national integration as it has branches all over India, 
representing national integration. So the Women's Indian Association, as well as the All India Women's Conference, are practicing communal harmony and national integration. I am really honored for the opportunity provided to speak at uh, speak on national integration and communal harmony at this uh, August gathering. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to the award ceremony, I now request Mrs. Rani Jerome, Mangir Karasi Mahalir Mandram, to introduce Mrs. Krishna Mal Jagannathan, social activist, freedom fighter, who continuously work on communal harmony. Honorable dignitaries on the dais and my dear friends, I'm here to talk about Batma Bhushan Krishnamal Jagannathan. Uh, she is a social reformist and a devout Gandhian. She is she was born, she's born on uh, 1920 and now running 96 years. And she is not able to present today because of her old age. She received the third highest uh, civilian award of the government, Padma Pushan, in 2020. Hamma had participated in the Indian freedom movement along with Gandhiji. She associated herself with Vinobaji in his Bhutan movement. She started land for farmers reform in Tanjur district and worked hard to get land for the landless farm laborers. She got secured actually 13,000 acres of land and distributed the land to landless workers, farm workers. Amma involved herself in the protection of ecosystem of coastal area which was getting damaged by prawn hatcheries. She was able to control hatcheries within 500 meters of the seashore. Madam and her husband, also a devout Gandhian, late Mr. Shankaralingam Jagannathan, established, a, established several non-governmental institutions for the uplift of poor and downtrodden. Amma was the Senate member of Madurai University and as well Gandhi Gram Trust. Padma Bhushan Amma was in Land Reform Committee, Education Committee and Planning Commission. Amma fought against social injustice. She worked on communal harmony extensively. Amma was honored by various awards and the award money was spent on her projects in true Gandhian spirit. And I am not listing out all the achievements and their awards for short want of time. WIA is honoring such a devout Gandhian social reformist, Padma Mushan Krishnamal Jagannathan, on behalf of our association, in appreciation of her human service to the society. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Ms. Bhuma Srinivasan, Treasurer, Women's Indian Association, to introduce Ms. K. Jayalakshmi, Future Torch Bearer of Women's Indian Association. My humble pranams to one and all present here. I'm very happy to introduce K. Jayalakshmi from the village of Adhanakote in Pudukote district where Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy belongs to that place and she had her education. She is from my alma mater. I, I'm very proud to say that. And uh, 
Selvi K. Jalakshmi from Vigilage of Adhanakote in Pudukote district is receiving Youth Achiever Award for her dedicated service in providing sanitation facilities for her village. When she was studying in 11th standard, she was selected to go to NASA. She lives in a mud house with her brother who is studying in 8th standard and a mentally ill mother. Selvi Jayalakshmi works very hard in breaking cashew nuts to take care of her family and also the medical facilities for her mother. Father left them and married another woman in the same village. And they all live together, live separately in the same street also. When she was selected to go to NASA, many NGOs came forward to help her financially for her trip. WIA also extended our help. Mrs. Vanija Krishnamurthy and myself, we met her at Pudukote and we gave our contribution to Jayalakshmi. When one such NGO by name Gramalia met her and informed her the willingness to support her, but this little innocent girl could have asked for a proper house for her or even some financial help for her further education. You know what this girl has done? This girl told them that she has enough money. Who will say? Even I and you won't say now that we have got enough money. This little girl who was studying in 11th standard, she said, we, I have enough money. If at all you want to do something, you do for our village. That Gramalia people immediately asked, and they appreciated this girl's mentality and helping the village. So immediately, Gramalia people asked, what do you want for your village? She asked, we don't have toilet facilities in this village, so please provide toilet facilities for our women in this village. Do you know how many toilets Gramalia constructed? One, two, ten, 126 toilets. Not one or two, 126 toilets, that too with the bath attached. The Gramalia is also very kind enough to do that, so also this Jayalakshmi, we feel proud she is going to come day after tomorrow because today in her college, the same Women's Day is happening and she is going to get an award in her college, so she is not able to come. This Jayalakshmi belongs to my alma mater, so also from the place of Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy. This junior Muthalakshmi Reddy is going to do a lot of service, not only to her village, but the entire district of the youth. WIA feels proud that uh, we have recognized that girl and we have adopted that girl. So for Deepavali, for Deepa, uh, Pongal and all, we are sending her new clothes. And whatever she wants for her mother and also for the brother, we are, we are doing a lot of uh, help to this girl. And also she has got many awards from so many organizations. And also she is a member of a uh, youth organization. And uh, youngsters, they are writing one book in Pudukote district. And she is only editing all the things and she is uh, participating in so many oratorical competition and winning so many prizes. And we are very happy that uh, WIA is going to honor her. We feel proud in honoring Selvi Jayalakshmi with Young Achiever Award. You all can see in the youth tube, YouTube about uh, Jayalakshmi, the, along with the Gramalia, she also helped them in constructing by like, taking sandal, by taking brick and everything, she has also helped those people in constructing the toilet. So we are very proud of Jayalakshmi. On behalf of Jayalakshmi, I request Silverani to come and receive the award and hand it over to her. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I request Mrs. Vanaja Krishnamurthy, Vice President, Women's Indian Association, to introduce Ms. Vinisha Uma Shankar, future torch bearer of Women's Indian Association. Uh, good morning to all. I am uh, introducing, it's a really, I am given the opportunity to introduce Ms. Vinisha uh, Uma Shankar. She, is, uh, sol uh, she discovered the uh, innovation, solar ironing box. So Vinisha has designed a mobile ironing cart 
which use solar panels to power a steam iron box. This can be powered uh, by pre-charged batteries, electricity or diesel powered generator in the absence of sunlight. The most important benefit of solar mining is that it eliminates the need of coal or ironing. Uh, the vendors can move around and offer services at doorstep for increasing their daily earning. For earning extra income, the ironing card can be fitted with a coin-operated GSM, PCO, USB, charging points, and mobile recharging. Liking science and technology, Vinisha looks at things in a different way. She has an inquisitive mind that likes to ask questions and find answers. Uh, reading books is her favorite hobby and has a collection of over 400 books at her home. She likes to sing, dance, draw, write, poems, yoga, gymnastics, and swimming. She wishes to become a scientist and invent useful products which can improve and live uh, in, uh, in standards of people, increase their comfort level, and make them happy. And another, she got an award, Ignite. 2019 award, she got an award up to 8th eight, eight standard, up to class 8th. So her award functions to award year also 2019. Really, I'm so happy to introduce her. Thank you so much. Uh, I request Sandhya to come and receive on behalf of I now request Mrs. Kannagi Prabhakaran, Secretary, Dr. MRW uh, Association, to introduce the keynote speaker, Dr. Nandita Krishna, Patron, Women's Indian Association and Director, CPR Foundation. My humble pranams to Onandal present here. Good morning to everybody. It is my immense pleasure and pride to elicit a few words about a distinguished and limelight celebrity, Dr. Nandita Krishna Madam, who has several feathers in her cap, and the institution which ought to be mentioned at this jun juncture is an indispensable. She is an ace historian, environmentalist, and a writer based in our greater Chennai. She is a doctorate in ancient Indian culture from Bombay University, whereas she has specialized in Indian and religion and had been a Hera scholar as well. She has been a professor and research guide for the PhD program of CPR Institute of Indological Research affiliated to University of Madras. It is she who established the CPR Center and Sakuntala Art Gallery in Chennai and Sakuntala Jagannathan Museum of Folk Art in Kanchipuram, apart from several academic institutions. She has been a president of CPR Ramasamy IF Foundation and director of CPR Institute of Indological Research in Chennai, wherein I too had been one among the arm team footfall for referring valuable information from its huge library which I was writing textbooks on environmental education as an author for Tamil Nadu Textbook Society. Thank you, Madam, for that great opportunity. She is an instrumental for the revival of painting traditions of the Kurumba tribes, poetry tra traditions of Kota women, and traditional drawing and painting in Mamalabram, and for the introduction of Tamil folk art forms in schools. It is Madam Dr. Nandita Krishna who restored the Varahishwara temple in Damal and a 450-year-old building in Kanchipuram. In 1990, she was deputed to the Archaeological Survey of India's restoration of 
Angkor Wat in Cambodia and has researched at Khmer temples and reported on restoration processes. She has also documented India's ecological heritage tra traditions. She has been the president of Kanjipuram Hindu Educational Society, which runs the five SSKV schools and one women's college in Kanjipuram and member governing body of the Blue Cross of India. Besides being a sinosheer in the aforesaid facets, Dr. Nandita Krishna has authored for 23 books on Indian art, culture, religion, and the environment, including life lessons from Swami Vivekananda, Mahavira, and Adi Shankara. Further, Book of Vishnu, Book of Avatars and Divinities, Book of Demons, Hinduism and Nature, Sacred Plants of India, Sacred Animals of India, painting, Paintings of Varadaraja Perumal Temple, which is under CPR publications, Madras then, Chennai now, Ganesha and Balaji Vengateshwara and Ganesha, painted manuscripts of Saraswati Makal Library of Government of Tamil Nadu, Mahabalipuram, The Ganga Comes to Tamil Nadu, and The Arts and Crafts of Tamil Nadu, The Art and Iconology of Vishnu Narayana, among others. Besides several research papers and numerous popular activities have been published by her. Above all her high profile stated at Supra, she is also a recipient of several awards, including Nari Shakti Praskar, Sri Ratna, and Outstanding Women of Asia. And as a DLAC from Vidya Shagar University, West Bengal. With the mentioning of a first set backdrop of invitee dignitary Dr. Nandita Krishna, a patron of WIA, it is very, very important on Pat, our pattern of WIA CPR, and Director CPR Foundation is warmly invited for her keynote address. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Padma Venkatraman, Ms. Pargavi Devendra, Ms. Bhuma Srinivasan, dignitaries on the dais, members of Women's India Association, teachers, and my dear students. I would like to first start by thanking WIA for inviting me to deliver this keynote address on a subject which um, has bothered me very much, to use the right word. Some of you who read my, who may have read my articles. I write the op-ed once a month in the Indian Express, and I have uh, said this time and again, that it is time that we all did something to unite. We have to be more proactive, not just say that we need national integration and so on, we do, but how to go about it. When I was in school studying in Bombay, uh, I didn't know the caste or religion of my classmates. In fact, I still don't. Now that I know that this name belongs to this religion, I may know the few religions, but I still don't know anybody's caste. Switch to 2009. I run uh, nine schools and a college. We never asked the students their caste till one day the director of school education sends us a letter saying that we must document every child's caste. So we sent out a letter to the parents asking them what the child's caste was. You'll be surprised if, to, if I tell you that we immediately received a visit from two scheduled caste parents, two scheduled caste couples actually, who said that they chose our school because we never asked the child's caste. So why are we doing it now? What do I say? That is, a, It is a government ruling. The government is forcing me. What do I say? With five states going to the polls, or just having completed their polls, all we heard about is the caste of each candidate and his caste strength. Parties choose candidates based on the caste majority in the area. 
And the candidate may be a criminal also. That doesn't matter in our democracy, unfortunately. It is shocking that 75 years after independence and increasing levels of education, we have not yet outgrown the divisions of caste and religion. Our country calls itself a secular state. Nevertheless, the elections today, the social crises and the political debates are intrinsically based on caste and community. Even the so-called secularists take sides in television debates. There is nothing more important to an individual or a country than to realize that there should be unity in essential matters. And these essential matters means that it, it includes everybody. There should be unity among the people. Liberty in others, your personal choices, and charity in all matters. Today, opposition or difference of opinion is regarded as something to be deprecated. The wonderful parliamentary debates we heard as children are subsumed by a cacophony today. If I switch on the TV, I hear everyone shouting, I've stopped watching TV. Unfortunately, caste has even permeated into Islam and Christianity. Once in Chennai, I went to the funeral of a Christian friend in a Chennai church. The priest asked me my caste. I said, I'm not a Christian, but I'd like to attend the funeral service for my friend. He told me that I must sit in the pew meant for my caste. Now, what does my caste have to do with death and mourning? In several villages, Dalits have to sit outside the church, and I have never understood why they converted. Similarly, Darzis, Dhobis, and Bhangis are much lower than the Sayeds and Sheikhs in the Muslim caste hierarchy, and the various castes do not intermarry. The remedy for this state of affairs is the complete remodeling of the system of education. Education is not merely primary, secondary, or tertiary education, but the education of the citizen from childhood up to the adult stage in human values, in the importance of national integration and communal harmony. Such an education can be imparted to this country through a spiritual and psychological revival. We must think of utilizing the tremendous instruments of propaganda, which are now, thanks to the March of Science, available to us. We must use the propaganda machinery for inculcating fundamental human values, such as courage, loyalty, truth, tolerance, and so on. This seems to be a task which needs mis missionary zeal and great initiative. Unfortunately, we are using technology to spread hate, not love. The British always denied that India was ever a united country, that it was never a nation. But we repudiated this assertion. The differences in India were trotted out by foreigners simply to justify their imperial rule. We held that India was and is a nation. The seeming differences and divisions were superficial and minor. Unity was the most fundamental aspect of Indian life. Throughout the ages, Indians have considered themselves as a distinct, unified people, not as Muslims and Hindus and so on. They have also been considered so by other countries. You go to the Middle East, even a Muslim is called a Hindi, Hindu, whatever they call them. The nation as an individual is a complex, organic whole. And there is no part of the country where Rama and Krishna are not known. But the unity that makes the nation an organic whole escapes analytical and laboratory treatment. National integration must be a part of our ethics and defy analysis. Generally, unity consists in the will of the people to consider themselves as one and united. It is more psychological than external or organization. Look at Ukraine. They are a mixture of different, uh, of not necessarily Ukrainians, but look at them standing up as one country, as one whole. India has been a nation through the centuries. Nation not in a Western or Westphalian sense, but in a more subtle and undefinable way. The only external unity that India possessed in the past was its geography. The Himalayas in the north and three oceans 
in the west, east, and south. A despite these differences, there has been a national entity as India and the Indian people. Through the centuries, the great acharyas, teachers, sadhus, sannyasis, wandered all over the country. They crossed the less length and breadth of what is now India at a time when there was no official India. And following them were crowds of common people who wandered throughout, the, throughout India as pilgrims. For example, uh, Tukaram, who sang his famous abhangs in Pandharpur. He is, his abhangs are sang, sung in Tamil Nadu, where the language is Tamil. And Tyagaraja's kritis in Telugu are also sung in Tamil Nadu. And vice versa. I mean, I'm only mentioning Tamil Nadu today. But it happens in other states too. The definitions of religion and caste as we know them were developed during the British period in the 19th century. According to anthropologist Susan Bailey of Cambridge University, until well into the colonial period, much of the subcontinent was still populated by people for whom the formal distinctions of caste and community were of only limited importance even in parts of the so-called Hindu heartland. That's North India, you know, UP Bihar. The institutions and beliefs which are now often described as elements of the traditional caste system were only just taking shape as recently as the 18th century. In, we all know that in Tamil Nadu, we had the Tinnai Palli, that is the schools which were taking place on the Tinnais. And Professor Bajaj has done yeoman's work in documenting the caste of those children and found that the children who went to Tinnai Pallis ranged from Brahmins to Mudalayars, Chettiyars, everybody, two scheduled castes. So nobody was left out of the Tinnai Palli, but of course the British banned the Tinnai Palli. That's another matter. So pre-colonial court documents and travelers' accounts make little or no mention of caste. The construction of social identities, of communal identities, caste identities, was done to serve the British government's desire to create a Hindu identity with common law for, single, for easy governance. Thus, a complex, diverse, and flexible society was re reduced to a single identity, separated by castes and religion, which were a part of the British government's divide and rule policy. We are the inheritors of this, and we have not got the brains to change it. We cannot deny the existence of anger and hate against those people who feel that their ancestors were um, harmed by other groups. So what is the solution? There has to be a solution. And in this, I have written time and again that a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, as conceived by Nelson Mandela, is the best solution. We must seat the antagonists across the table, let them pour out their anger, and end the session with a cup of tea and a handshake. We will be able to strengthen the already existing psych psychological and cultural bonds of our unity if we safeguard the bonds that unite us. If we want to retain our freedom, if we want a powerful India that marches ahead, we have to strengthen these bonds. Vasudeva Kutumbakam, Jai Hind. Thank you. On behalf of WIA, it's a small memento mom.
so proud to we are so proud to announce these are all the indigenous people narikurava what we call and the wea has started a program for them yeah. and uh, you know they have started one village without hunger patni illada gramo so that you know they don't have to go and beg when they cannot work when they cannot uh, when they are not well or uh, don't have a job they will uh, there is a seed money which we are providing and they take out of that and after two days three days whenever they are uh, they are able to earn back that money they will come and give it back to the with additional money we don't say pay any uh, interest or anything but they themselves feel they are very grateful that they went to bed without hunger you know they are, they were not hungry so that is the concept and uh, they are all here we'll give a big clap and they <laughs> thank you all very much thank you thank you that was truly a very kind gesture i now request the president to uh, give the give away the award for miss vinisha uma shankar the future tor future torch bearer of women's indian association she has created a solar cart for ironing A very good morning to everyone present here. I'm Vinisha Mashankar. I'm a grade 10 student and a 15-year-old innovator, artist and public speaker. I'm really thankful to the Women's Indian Association for honoring me with this memento and award. It did take quite a while to reach here, but I'm really glad that I managed to come here. And one moral which I would like to share is that people influence people and if you can influence someone else in a positive way it may not only impact your life but it can also impact others and change their life as well so keep going and stay positive thank you that did that uh, really did uh, make our day happy I now request Mrs Rani Dhanraj President Indranagar Women's uh, uh, Women's Association to introduce the speaker Ms Manju Kak member in charge AIWC New Delhi god our creator has stored within our minds and personalities great potential strength and ability prayer helps us tap and develop these powers by dr apj abdul kalam good morning friends it is my privilege to introduce dr manju kak she is a writer an author a critic and an art and cultural historian 
She has also been a volunteer engaged in development issues and women's organization. Her friction is says critical reviews and articles have appeared in newspapers, journals, anthologies, and magazines in India and abroad since 1990, including the Hindu Women's Press, The Times of India, The West View Press, Katha Price Stories, Khalifa Woman, Mail Today, Toronto Review, Hong Kong Standard, Arts of Asia, Little Magazines, and Canadian Feminist Studies Journal. She has been a recipient of Hathoden and Charles Wallace and Ministry of Culture Fellowship. She has been a particular drawn to Himalayan culture and has researched and curated ethnographic exhibitions on the same, including a craftsman and his craft. Iconography of wood carving of Kumayun 1998, the Uttarakhand Development Report, Handicrafts 2003, N. Roe Rich, Printer of Himalayas, the Roe Rich Peace Pact and Banner of Peace 2009, and directed a documentary film, They Who Walked Mountains, the erstwhile salt routes from India to Tibet. She has a PhD in art history from the National Museum, New Delhi, and has been a teacher and visiting professor of art history, literature, and cultural studies in Delhi, the UK, and Hong Kong, Center for Nehru Studies, and Academy of Third World Studies, Jamia Millia Islamia National Museum Institute, New Delhi, St. Stephen's College, and Open Learning University, Hong Kong, St. Columba School, New Delhi. She has worked as a consultant with the Ministry of Culture, 50th anniversary celebrations during 97-98, and intact Cohan's Anticraft Board. Currently, she is a member in charge in All India Women's Conference, established in 1927, and trustee of the Lal Bagadu Sastri Memorial Trust. She has served on various NGO committees. She has received awards such as in 1990, an award at Asian Voices in English, sponsored by the British Council and Hong Kong University for When I Return. In 1992, the Kata Award for Blessed are my sons, India. In 1995, Senior Fellowship from Department of Culture, Government of India. In 1995, Charles Wallace, British Council Award at the University of Stirling, UK. 2003, Hathorden Fellowship by the Haynes Foundation at Edinburgh, Scotland. And her publications are first light in Colonel Pura, Requiem for an Unsung Revolutionary and the Other Stories. Nicholas Rorich, Painter of Himalayas, Legacy and Quest. Whose Media, A Woman's Space. Just and Just One Life and Other Stories. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that introduction. It seems longer than the program itself. <laughs> but I don't know. I didn't give it to you, so I'm not to blame. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, regarding why we are here, 
and uh, how pleased I am that Padma ji and her whole team, Bhargavi ji, Bhuma, and of course the correspondent of this college, and Nandita Krishna, whom I feel is a, you know, soul spirit, have allowed us to have this program. But most important is our president, Sheila Kakre, who has been the moving spirit through all the programs we have done, 13 webinars, and now the physical programs, because she has stood solidly behind me and said, go ahead, Manju, this is important. So a special thanks to Sheila Ji. Now, I'm going to give you a very informal speech. And I hope, I'm, I don't know Tamil, but I'm speaking in English. You see, I say this everywhere, and then somebody says, oh, you're just like Indira Gandhi. Wherever she went, she said, I'm from here. Then she went to Kashmir, she said, I'm from here. But that is the truth about my community, that is the Kashmiri Pandits. In search of jobs and work, because we were a clerical people, you know, we knew how to read and write. We went all over India looking for work. My grandmother was brought up in Chennai. And I was telling this to Padma ji and also to the, uh, to the others that uh, I was very curious. I don't know Chennai, but I was very curious to see Theosophical Society, Adyar, because that is in her biography where they grew up here as North Indians because he worked for the South Madras Railway and lived in Mailapur. So what else is national integration? What else is uh, communal harmony? That somebody from Kashmir is living here, brings up 11 children here, sends them all over the world to integrate. So we all got integrated. I'm back in Chennai, just very curious to see the Theosophical Society because that is where it began. Annie Besant has been my heroine since I was young. Why? Because particularly our community of Kashmiri Saraswats were drawn to the philosophy of the Theosophical Society. And the philosophy of Theosophical Society is very important for us to understand because India emerged when Annie Besant and people like her came back to us and told us in early 1900, your culture, your roots, your history is much more than the colonial rule that you are suffering under. It's interesting, it took foreigners to come to tell us, including Nicholas Rurik, who was also a theosophist, to tell us about our ancient culture and roots and to bring it back into our consciousness because for 200 years, we had become an enslaved country. Angrezo ka raj tha. They were white. We were not. So we were inferior. How did we fight them back? Gandhiji, of course, with his political movement. But before the political movement was a cultural movement. And the cultural movement was rediscovering our roots that lay in our ancient Hindu faith. And Hinduism meaning a river, where everyone existed, Jain, Buddhist, everyone. So that is why Adyar, Chennai, Mailapur, they are important to us in history. Of course, we have the malls, we have the jewelry shops, we enjoy seeing everything. But at the root of that were these spirits who thought beyond themselves and realized that the way we have communal harmony and integration is when we realize we are all interconnected. Ukraine war, oil prices here. I have to pay, as Ashita was saying this morning, 120 for petrol. We're integrated. We're all together. Nothing exists in isolation. Nothing is me and mine. It is as the Buddha said. It's when you embrace the other and understand, my richness is your poverty. When America understands their foreign policy is Putin's problem, NATO, that we can have genuine peace. And we as women have to understand that, inculcate it in our families, in our children, in our communities, in our organizations, just as the WIA or All India Women's Conference or Madam's College 
of course, Madam's work as an art historian in Angkor Wat and everywhere else. So our route here today, we are gathered in Chennai, Adiyar Theosophical Society. Annie Besant became a legend. My mother studied in Annie Besant School in Varanasi. My aunts, my sisters. Why? Because those days, there was an enlightenment amongst parents. No, we're not sending our children here, there. We're sending them to her school, Krishnamurti school, in Rajghat, in Varanasi. And she went from Adiyar to Varanasi to establish the Krishnamurti school, where my mother, my aunts, everyone studied. So what I'm trying to say to you is that is where our whole sense of national integration, harmony emerged. And that is how Gandhiji was able to harness those feelings. And that is how women took off their gold necklaces and earrings and said, for the freedom movement. My grandfather was a freedom fighter. I've heard those stories. He said, you received it on a platter. But when my father went to school or college, he couldn't sit in the same railway compartment as the Englishman. He had to sit in the third class. Gandhiji visited our home. And he stayed there. And my grandfather could not do many British cases because he was stigmatized for having hosted Gandhiji. So these things we have grown up with. And some of you have not grown up with. And the young generation that is here only know all this as stories. It's like a necklace. Very easy to break it and scatter the beads. Today, our country, our world is like that we might just scatter the beads and the necklace will break. So it is for us, each one of us, to see that each bead remains tight. And that is why All India Women's Conference, that was, of course, you know, founded in 1927. And since then, during the freedom struggle, after the freedom struggle, we worked for the refugees who came from Pakistan, from East Bengal, women of the All India Women's Conference have always made their mission, their mandate, national integration, communal harmony, peace. That is in our mission statement, and we have not wavered from there. I am very honored that Sheila Ji has made me member in charge of uh, communal harmony. As you know, before this, I was the national treasurer, but before me, there has been uh, Mrs. Bina Jain, there has been Bina Kohli, and many others who had the same responsibility and who worked for the same cause. So this is an important cause. We are lucky that the uh, National Foundation for Communal Harmony has given us complete freedom to conduct them because they have always learned the lesson that for 100 years almost, women of the All India Women's Conference are dedicated patriots, dedicated nationalists, and this is what they're going to do. I would just like to add one more thing. Thanks to Sheila Ji, I am Vice President of the International Alliance of Women, which is uh, also an old organization just as ours. And we are having on the 16th and 17th two programs which are on militarization, peace, harmony, as well as climate change. So climate change is also part of communal harmony, part of national integration, because it's not human beings alone that create conflict. It is what we do to our earth that creates conflict, what we eat that gives us cancer, what we do that creates pollution. So harmony, peace is all about respecting each other and the environment and realizing that if you fire a nuclear missile, I'm going to get hit. If you throw a plastic bag, I will have to suffer the consequences. Having said this, thank you for being here. And thank you to the National Foundation for Communal Harmony for sponsoring this program. And I hope Padmaji will have it, not in June, maybe in July, in worse weather, where we will be sweating profusely. But because we are dedicated to the cause, we will do it. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Mrs. Prema Sitharaman, 
Dr. M. R. W. A. to introduce Dr. Latha Rajendran, Secretary and Correspondent Dr. M. G. R. Janaki College to motivate the students on National Harmony. It's my pleasure to introduce a strong woman, Dr. Latha Rajendran. Of course, she needs no introduction. A strong woman known, she has strength enough for the journey, but a woman uh, of strength knows it is in this journey that she will become uh, strong. Mr. Uh, Miss uh, Dr. Lata Rajendran is a soft-spoken, gentle, unassuming lady. Though her journey has not been an easy with one with uh, with the challenges that come with the political affiliations, she has a determination that is remarkably fierce. She pays tribute to the unforgettable late Tamil Nadu Chief Minister, Dr. MGR, M.G. Ramachandran, though the names of the many institutions she presides over Dr. MGR home and the higher secondary school for the speak and the hearing impaired. And Dr. MGR Janaki College of Arts and Science for women. Lata Ji was born and brought up by Mrs. Janaki Ramachandran and Dr. Ramachandran at the tranquil Ramavaram Gardens, known simply as Totem. Lata did her uh, primary and high school at uh, Sacred Heart Girls Matriculation School, went on to complete her schooling, followed by B.Ed., M.Ed., M.A. Sociology, M.Phil Education, and uh, Human Resources Management, Senior Diploma in Teaching the Deaf and Diploma in Public Relations, and also done a course in the University of Washington. Lataji is a disciple of a renowned Dr. Padma Subramaniam. She is a dancer. She was a dancer, held many posts like And, and a correspondent principal preside, president, decorated with many awards like best teacher, best social worker, award for the person who are differently abled 2018 from the government of Tamil Nadu, Kalaima Mani Award for dance in August 2019 from government of Tamil Nadu, Lata Giant Rotary in 1995 and keenly involved in the activities. She has uh, served as the president of uh, the club twice in 203 and 203, 204, and 209 to uh, 10. Thanks for the opportunity to introduce Lasa Ji. She, uh, she is a member of uh, MRW, Muthil Shvi Reddy, and success is a, a journey, not a destination. The doing is uh, often more important than the outcome. Thank you very much. We are proud of the fact that our country is a democracy and more so that it is the largest dem democracy. The pride does not end with securing voting rights but in shouldering the responsibility of a stable government. Freedom is a responsibility that each and every one of us has to be aware of. Power rests in unity and we must strive to stay united. A country with such variety and diversity as ours 
calls for consistent efforts at ensuring solidarity. Schools and colleges as institutions that nurture the first two decades of life as child, teenager and young adult play a very significant role in preparing the responsible adult entrusted with voting rights. Organizing talks that instill this awareness and activities that enhance the understanding go a long way. Dr. M. G. I. Janaki College for Women takes conscious efforts to plan and organize programs that sensitize students to the values and culture that India embraces as a nation. For secular, secular assemblies to the celebration of all festivals, there is a joyous involvement and students come together for competitions. Dance and music forms from across the country are represented on stage to create the festive mood. They join together as a team and the spirit of oneness per pervades. Activities celebrating events on national significance and religious faith are entrusted with students who voluntarily participate. Community service activities provides opportunities for students to reach out to the community as a group. Be it NSS, Rotract or RRC, there is a sense of responsibility and commitment as a group. Individual identities are merged in the institutional identity and there is a large vision that is built for them. The spirit of staying together blossoms from the camaraderie that su such activities facilitate. All these, we hope, will bind them in a friendship that is beyond differences of any kind. I hope today's celebrations is yet another such effort towards harmony. All India Women's Conference, New Delhi and Women's India Association is organizing this uh, program on national integration and communal harmony uh, at uh, Dr. M. G. R. Janaki College for Women. I appreciate their efforts, and I wish everyone present here a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I now request Mrs. Shanti Socrates, Sanju Women's Welfare Association, to introduce Ms. Sheila Kagde, President, AIWC. Good morning, everyone. I am profusely overjoyed to present Srimati Sheila Kakde, President of All India Women's Conference today. Srimati Sheila Kakde began her journey of service at the branch level in Mumbai. In 1987, founded Gul Mahar Mahila Mandal along with her friends in Juhu. In 1993, she was a member of Srimati Kesar Boy Bimani Working Women's Hostel Committee. She had organized the 82nd annual conference for four days in Mumbai during her tenure of, as president of Mumbai branch from 2019 to 2011. A prestigious event which happened in Mumbai after 47 years. So you can give a big hand for that because after 47 years. Her positions in AWC included Zonal organizer between 2003 and 11, uh, Secretary General AWC 2011 to 14, Vice President of AWC during 2014 to 17, and member in charge of Constitution AWC in 2017. As chairperson of the Working Women's Hostel, she has initiated a project to have 8.5 kilowatt rooftop solar power panels installed for generating. 1,020 units of electricity per month for the hostel, which serves around savings of 13,000 on bills per month. This power plant, which also reduces carbon footprint equivalent to 510 fully grown trees and carbon dioxide emission of 11.6 tons per year. This I am including in the introduction as I am the member in charge for solar and renewable energy. Thanks to Sheila G. She has also initiated a vermicompost pit for wet waste management, 
With all these feathers in her cap, she has successfully scaled upward right up to being the elected president of AWC. Till date, going strong in the COVID-19 pandemic situation, encouraging the branches to arrange awareness programs virtually, the series of webinars on what to the glorious past, presenting the glorious history of 94 years of existence of AWC is another achievement. AWC's prestigious project of old age home at Vrindavan, the planning and execution is being done under her supervision. An e-waste collection center was opened and the compost was, um, campus was made zero waste zone. And known for her environmental activities and sincere interest in those activities and for her positive and motivational attitude towards the branches of AWC across the country with a sense of adventure which knows no bounds. Here is Mrs. Sheila Kakde. Please join me in welcoming her to give her special address. Namaskar and Vanakkam to one and all present here for this very important program on national integration and communal harmony given to All India Women's Conference by National Foundation for Communal Harmony. NFCH has been giving grants to AIWC for organizing programs of promotion of communal harmony for many, many years. And we are grateful to Ministry and especially Secretary Manoj Pant and Sri Saurav Dubeji, who were to come but could not come due to the meetings in Delhi, for showing faith in us to conduct these programs in various cities. In the year 2020, we conducted two physical programs, one at Rajkot and another at Lucknow, and 10 webinars nationwide. In 2021, physical programs at Tripura and Bikaner, and uh, we have done and one webinar of peace with BK Shivani, Ji, Shivani Didi from Brahma Kumaris was also uh, conducted. And to, after that, today's program uh, here, and then on 11th March, we'll be doing another one at Jabalpur. We are happy and grateful to Women's Indian Association <clears throat> for doing today's session in Chennai with Dr. Lata Rajendran, Secretary and Correspondent and of Dr. Janki College, and, um, and, and Dr. Na Nimisha Krishna as the... Nandita, okay. Sorry. Uh, Nandita Krishna with us today to give her expert comments. And of course, Dr. Manju Kak, our MIC, AIWC's MIC. <clears throat> we all know that the word communal harmony means that people of different religion, caste, creed, sex, and different backgrounds live together in the society with love and peace amongst themselves. Communal harmony strives to create goodwill and harmony among various communities. India is a country of multi-ethnic culture where since times immemorial, people belonging to different religions, racial, cultural, and lingual identities have been living together harmoniously. But in recent times, as everybody has said, and we have also noticed, many untoward incidents affecting communal harmony in various parts of the country have been on the rise. This is the most serious threats to our sovereign democratic secular policy. 
It is sad reality today. Those ideals of Gandhiji, Nelson Mandela, Gautam Buddha, Swami Vivekananda have been forgotten by us. India has a legacy of unity and diversity which has to be maintained throughout the country. <clears throat> Mutual tolerance towards various religions must be increased to eliminate violence, attitudinal changes for peace existence to be brought in so that harmony and peace is maintained throughout the country. That is the main essence of this program. All India Women's Conference is the 94 years old organization established in 1927 by Sarojini Naidu, Margaret Cousins, Dr. Annie Besant, and Maharani Chimnabai Gaikwad II of Baroda as the first president, and Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, the first secretary of um, AIWC. Now we have our head office at 6 Bhagwan Das Road, New Delhi. Education and position of women in British India needed a lot to be improved and the formation of a community of women to work towards improving the status of women was the need of the hour. Chosen representatives of these conferences all over India attended a formal conference in Pune on 6th January 1927 and later in Delhi, and women and girls from all classes and creed were encouraged to avoid child or early marriage and to get formally educated. Women of stature, such as Viceroy of India, Lady Irwin, Vijayalakshmi Pandit, Rajkumari Amrit Kaur, Lady Ramarao, Maharani's of Travancore, Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy, Hansa Mehta, to name a few, were the stalwarts of this illustrious organization. Many institutions like Lady Irwin College, New Delhi, Cancer Institute, Chennai, Family Planning Association of India, Amrit Kaur Institute for Mentally Challenged Children are few among many others pioneered by AIWC, which are now autonomous bodies in India. All India Women's Conference also brought upon many legislative reforms in India, including the Universal Adult Franchise, Hindu Code Bill, Maternity Benefits Act, Sharda Act, etc. AIWC at its own level runs projects and programs implementing the Sustainable Development Goals. SDG 5 and 16 are particularly important for peacekeeping as they stress on gender equality and promoting peaceful and inclusive societies. Regular crash programs are run in the branches. Many branches are running primary schools, working women's hostel are also run, an old age home at Vrindavan for abandoned old ladies are, is run by AIW since last 40 years. Our three trusts for education, health, and senior citizens also run separate programs. I'm giving this detailed information about AIWC. As I see a um, lot of young people here, they may not be knowing about AIWC, though they are very much aware of WIA's program here. And as um, our Dr. Nandita has uh, shifted from Bombay to Chennai, and she has joined them here, some of you may join later on to other cities in our country. So should be aware of what AIWC is doing. And you can also join us and extend your hand in service to the society. Na National integration and communal harmony are being offered as programs to AIWC's vast network of branches, numbering around 500 all over India, with membership around a lakh and a plus. Other programs conducted are health checkups, legal awareness, anemia programs, women's safety, socioeconomic programs for empowerment, safe girl child, gender sensitization, sexual harassment and legal awareness, environment and climate change, renewable energy, water and waste management all go hand in hand. We at AIWC must strive hard through our branches to at least curtail the no incidents which disrupts peace. It is well-known fact that in case of communal clashes and conflicts, 
women are the prime and worst victims. We all know that in the real world, it is not possible to be equitable, but peaceful coexistence is a must. Even though we are progressing on many fronts, women in our society are still affected by violence and lack of safety, which is negative aspect of peace. In any violence, either domestic or community related, the roles of women is very critical. Women must be educated and made aware to promote the concept of tolerance and peaceful coexistence. They should be motivated to raise their voice against injustice and all forms of violence. It is as well known fact that women have more patience, tolerance and compassion. The role of women's organization comes to the forefront in providing crisis counseling for violence victims. <clears throat> all women's organizations should come together to work during the communal riots. We at AIWC, we have given training to our staff members also in uh, understanding what is peace and how to maintain communal relations healthy. <clears throat> so we had conducted some few programs and recently we conducted a series of lectures on peace and harmony with Brahma Kumaris to our staff members and just to build in, you know, the attitudinal changes. That really has helped us. We conducted about 10 series of programs every Tuesday to our staff members. Most of them are ladies, but their families were also involved in that. And that has really given us, this was for ladies also and the gent staff also. Uh, and their families, that really helped us, and they all enjoyed the program, and we find um, definite change in their attitude and behavior. What I feel in continuation to the discussion we had earlier, and especially to Dr. Kark's uh, uh, thoughts she has put in, I feel we know that we all are children of one God, one supreme power, he has bestowed us with all his powers of love, purity, happiness, peace, knowledge, energy, and joy. But in the course of time, due to our selfish attitude, our ego, anger, jealousy, lust, and attachment have lost them or are overpowered. We need to realize that and regain them then every day will be celebration for all and want, uh, and we don't need to differentiate or compare. Just do our best and change your attitude at looking at each other. Then our tomorrow will be peaceful, joyful of happiness and love and compassion. Women's Day was celebrated yesterday and let me wish all of you belated happy Women's Day. And if we uh, behave or understand what I said just now, then we will not have to celebrate International Women's Day, but we can celebrate International Humanitarian Day, and that will serve the purpose for both. And we women do not have to fight for the rights. Thank you. Sarve Sukhina Santu, Sarve Santu Niramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Paschantu, Ma Kaschit Dukha Bhagavai. see you with a memento. Ma'am, we would be happy if you address the gathering. Very good morning to one and all. Um, thank you so much for asking me to address because I was not prepared. So, but however, thanks a lot. Uh, respected President, 
um, my dear President Shira Khakade, um, President WIA, dignitaries on the stage and off the stage, and the award winners, many congratulations to you all. Um, I feel privileged to be sharing the dais among such stalwarts. And I do not want to say much because the, you know, the learned and who have been in this line have told a lot. So and I'm, I, I come to understand that there's, there's a lot of cultural programs also following. However, I would like to take one or two points. Um, uh, please excuse me if I am not prepared, but I just want to speak informally. Yes, it all has to start. One is from self. And here we see a mixed crowd from all age groups, right from an youngster to an aged. As a grandmother, you need to influence in your family. As a parent, you have to influence your, um, uh, your children. And then as an youngster, you should influence your elders and the generation to come. OK, as they say, women play a great role in influencing or taking this um, whole thing of integration. Uh, and um, unless we do it, I don't think we can take it further. So it has to start. If I am speaking and telling you, I need to follow it, right? So and I can strongly say it because I do follow it. As uh, Mrs. Nandini said that we didn't know in our school days what religion, what caste we are, we ourselves are, or you know our friends are. Unfortunately, the education system, they say education widens the uh, minds of um, people, but we see that uh, it's, it's going round. You know, the earth is round. It has to come back to one point. Unfortunately, though educated, uh, the issue of integration, community, religion is coming back. And it's a very saddest part that uh, we feel hurt about. And what I see in my home state happening in Karnataka, it's a very staring thing as an educationist where, I mean, uh, I, I am part of an education institute where we say we promote our tagline is one caste, one religion, and one God for humanity. That is our tagline. Okay, that's not our own tagline, but it is the, we follow the, you know, principles of Sri Narayana Guru. Okay, which nowadays I think some of you know the social reformer. And that has been implemented from my grandfather to my mother, and it has come down to us. So the influence of a family, that's the first influencer. How much ever we speak here, how much ever we say, the family, you know, uh, is the one strongest influence uh, uh, the generation can take. And I am example for that. Secondly, <coughs> I say, yes, the government. As you said, as an education, he said, every time we make a listing of you know, which caste they belong to, uh, it really saddens us as an educational institution, as Madam said. It really saddens us. Why this? You know, uh, on the basis we have to give the every year and year you know, gender as well as caste system. And um, Mrs. Manju Kak said about our personal, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, um, first personal experience. I have also have personal experience because I belong to a mixed marriage. Okay, so my son, in the uh, in the form what they say, put your caste. You know, I put as Indian, and the um, you know they said no, you need to put a caste. I put my caste and my husband caste. I belong to a backward caste, and my husband belongs to the higher most caste of you know, my uh, state, you know. So I put both the caste. Then they said, which category would we put him? I said, I, we don't want to put, we don't want to claim any category. Uh, you asked for it, so we put it. Otherwise, we have nothing, you know, be a Roman in Rome, that's it, whichever, wherever you belong. So unless we start from ourselves, how much ever we say, how much ever we speak, doesn't have an effect. As this little girl said, people influence people. You know, that's very true. As an youngster, she has understood. And if this crowd, in all, it's not only the youngsters who has to influence, if it starts from the, the age above, it has to percolate down. That's all I say. Uh, start from yourself and take it down. I'm sure uh, you know, the youngsters don't get you know, I mean, influenced. Because I've seen in my state, I think all of you know about what's happening in Karnataka now. When religion caste gets into the education system, I think that is the saddest part. That is the 
something where you know we cannot see progressive india so please do not allow those things to come in this system and uh, let's follow what we follow in our own personal spaces and be one in the uh, uh, in the outer uh, professional space thank you so much for giving me this opportunity thank you so much for also calling me for today's function thank you so much as a token of love and appreciation from women's indian association we would like to give this small token to sarjita who was the camper for this today's program i request our president to give this to her I now request Ms Manju Kak to honor Ms Padma Venkatraman President Women's India Association down history for her library WI I now request the dignitaries on the dais to join the audience for the cultural program.
I request the performers to kindly uh, give your audio to the audio person there so that he'll be able to play it. I repeat, I request the performers to kindly give your audio to the audio person so he could play it. Kalai Nigar Chila participate Pandravanga, Ungloda audio over the audio person Kita Kurthinga, Unga the play Panavanga. Peace is one such thing that the whole world looks forward in today's turbulent times. I'm sure this performance on peace would definitely bring a breath of fresh air to our lives. I call the students of Natya Department, Dr. MGR Janaki College, for their dance performance. you girls having witnessed peace we now move on to another element in our lives which can enlighten our day and that's poetry I now call upon Mrs. Kannagi Prabhakaran to share her pieces of creativity with us
good afternoon to one and all present here the the kavithai is about love compassion which is the need of the all all people should be treated equally regardless of who they are more equality more hope more humanity and more love நான் என்பதல்ல நாம் இந்த தமிழ் கவிதை வந்து ஜஸ்ட்டு தேசிய ஒருமைப்பாடு மற்றும் சமுதாய நல்லிணக்கம் பற்றி அந்த கவிதை தர இருக்கிறேன் மத மத நல்லிணக்கம் நான் என்பதல்ல நாம் என் என்பதல்ல எமது உயிர் ஒன்றே உடல்தான் பல பல உயிர் ஒன்றே உடல்தான் பல பல தேசம் என்பது நேசம் தேட கிடைப்பது இறை அன்பு தேசம் என்பது நேசம் தேட கிடை கிடைப்பது இறை அன்பு முப்பது கோடி முகமுடையால் என்றான் பாரதி முப்பது கோடி முகமுடையால் எனில் சிந்தை ஒன்றுடையாள் இன்றும் எத்தனை கோடி முகங்கள் என்றாலும் தேசிய சிந்தனை ஒன்றுடனே வாழ்ந்திடுவ விழைகின்றோம் எத் இன்றும் எத்தனை கோடி முகங்கள் ஆனாலும் தேசிய சிந்தனை ஒன்றுடனே வாழ்ந்திடவே விழைகின்றோம் புறாக்கள் கோயிலிலும் உண்டு மசூதியிலும் உண்டு சர்ச்சிலும் உண்டு புறாக்கள் கோவிலிலும் உண்டு மசூதியிலும் உண்டு சர்ச்சிலும் உண்டு அடிப்படை தேவை அன்பு 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 அடிப்படை தேவை அன்பு 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 ஒன்றேதான் நாம் மனிதம் இயற்கையின் கைக்குழல் அல்லது இறைவனின் கைக்குழல் இயற்கை நேசிப்பவங்களுக்கு இயற்கையாக இருக்கட்டும் இறைவனை நேசிப்பவர்களுக்கு இறைவனாக இருக்கட்டும் நாம் மனிதம் இயற்கையின் கைக்குழல் நம்மை இசைப்பது இறைவன் இயற்கை நம் நாதம் இயற்கையின் கீதம் இறைவனின் கீதம் நமது நாதம் இயற்கையின் கீதம் இறைவனின் கீதம் இதில் உயர்ந்தோர் தாழ்ந்தோர் உன்னாடு என்னாடு என்பதென்ன இதில் உயர்ந்தோர் தாழ்ந்தோர் உன்னாடு என்னாடு என்பதென்ன எல்லோரும் ஓர் குலம் எம்மதம் நம்மதமே எல்லோரும் ஓர்குலம் எம்மதமும் நம்மதமே மத நல்லிணக்கத்தோடு மண்ணினை வளர்ப்போரே மாந்தன் மத நல்லிணக்கத்தோடு மண்ணினை வளர்ப்போரே மாந்தன் அதாவது மனிதன் தருணம் இது கல்வியுகம் வேண்டுவன செய்திடும் திறன் உண்டு தருணம் இது கல்வியுகம் வேண்டுவன செய்திடும் திறன் உண்டு நமக்கு அந்த திறன் உண்டு தேசிய ஒரு ஒருமைப்பாட்டு உணர்வுடன் மத நல்லிணக்கத்தை மேம்படுத்தும் மேலான மனமும் உண்டு தேசிய ஒருமைப்பாட்டு உணர்வுடன் மத நல்லிணக்கத்தோடு மேம்படுத்தும் மேலான நல் மனமும் உண்டு நம்மிடம் மேலான நல் மனமும் உண்டு என்று இந்த தருணத்தில் இந்த வாய்ப்பை கொடுத்தமைக்கு நன்றி கூறி அமைகிறேன் நன்றி வணக்கம் Nandri ma'am. Social equality is the best weapon to fight against the threats and challenges of national integration. I would like to call the youth group to stage a play. இனிய காலை வணக்கம் 
இப்போ கேட்குதா ஆ நாங்கள் வந்து கேள் நாடக குழுவிலேருந்து வந்திருக்கோம் இன்றைக்கி நாங்கள் உங்களுக்காக ஒரு சின்ன நாடகம் போட போகிறோம் நாடகம் பார்க்க எல்லாம் ஆர்வமாக இருக்கீங்களா சத்தமே வரலையே ஸோ மகளிர் தினத்து அன்னைக்கு அதுவும் இன்றைக்கி வந்து நம்ம தேசிய ஒருமைப்பாடு நல்லிணக்கம் குறித்த ஒரு கருத்தில் வந்து இன்றைக்கி ஒரு நாடகம் போடலான்னும் போது எவ்வளோ பெரிய சவால் இருக்குது யாரை சொல்கிறது எதை சொல்கிறது எதை தொடர்றது எதை தொடக்கூடாது அதுவே பெரிய சவாலான விஷயம் அப்படி ஒரு சவாலை நாங்கள் இன்றைக்கி உங்களுக்காக எடுத்து இன்றைக்கி இனிய ஒரு வாய்ப்பை வந்து டபிள்யூஏ நமக்காக இங்கே கொடுத்துருக்காங்க அப்படி ஒரு நேரத்தில் இன்றைக்கி எங்களுடைய கேள் நாடக குழு சார்பாக இங்கே ஒரு நாடகம் போடுறோம் ஸோ இந்த நாடகம் நாடகத்தோட பேர் வந்து பாறை அப்படிங்கிற நாடகம் ஸோ இந்த நாடகம் பாருங்கள் பார்க்கும்போது இன்றைய காலகட்டத்தில் இந்த நாடகம் வந்து எப்படி இன்றைக்கி இருக்கக்கூடிய இளைய தலைமுறையினருக்கு எவ்வளோ முக்கியமான ஒரு விஷயமாக இருக்கும் அப்படிங்கிறது உங்களுக்கு ஒரு புரிதலாக இருக்கும் எல்லாம் மைக்கும் ஆன் பண்ணு ஸோ வி ஆர் ஃப்ரம் த தியேட்டர் குரூப் கால் கேல் ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு பர்ஃபார்ம் அ ப்ளே ஆன் கம்யூனல் ஹார்மனி ஸோ இட் இஸ் வெரி சேலஞ்சிங் டு பர்ஃபார்ம் அ ப்ளே ஆர் எனி கண்டென்ட் விதவுட் மென்ஷனிங் எனி கம்யூனல் ஐடென்டிட்டி பட் வி ஹவ் கம் அப் வித் அ கான்செப்ட் கால்ட் பாறை பாறை மீன்ஸ் ராக் விச் வி ஆர் ட்ரைங் டு டிபிக்ட் அ ப்ளே விச் இஸ் வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் அண்ட் இட்ஸ் நீட் ஆஃப் தி ஆர் ஃபார் யங்கர் ஜென்ரேஷன் ஹூ ஆர் கனெக்டட் வித் சோஷியல் மீடியா so that's that's what our objective is all about so thank you பெரிய பிரச்சனை ஆயிடும் முதல்ல நாடகத்தை ஆரம்பிங்க 
வழிபாட்டுக்கு போற வழிபாட்டுக்கு போற வகையில எதுக்கு வழியில தடையா இந்த பாறை இருக்குதுன்னு நான் கேக்குறேன் எதுக்கு இந்த பாறை போடா வாட்ஸ்அப் போடா ட்விட்டர் மிதிப்பே பேஸ்புக் வழிபாட்டு தளத்துக்கு போற வழியில தடை தடைய விதிச்சது யாரு இவங்களா இல்ல அவங்களா இல்ல அவங்களோட சேர்ந்து இவங்களா சம்பந்தப்பட்டது என்பது தெரியும் வரை உடைக்கவோ அகற்றவோ கோர்ட்டில் தடை விதிக்கிறதா புது பொருளை உடைச்சுக்கலாம் 
இவனுங்க புதுசா கட்டி வச்சுக்க வீட்டை உடச்சு கொடுத்துக்கிறாங்க வீட்டை உடைச்சது யாரு உடைக்க சொன்னது யாரு இவங்களா இல்ல அவங்களா வர வர இந்த பாறைக்கு ரொம்ப முக்கியத்துவம் ஆயிட்டு இருக்கு வேற யாருனா சொந்தம் கொண்டாடுறதுக்குள்ள நம்ம சொந்தம் கொண்டாடி வேண்டியதா எனக்கு வேண்டியது அமைதி மட்டும்தான் அதாவது நான் ஒன்று கேட்கிறேன் இந்த பாறை அவர்கள் வழிக்கு போகும் போது தடையாக இருக்கிறது என்பதனால் இவர்களெல்லாம் அவர் குழந்தைகள் பள்ளிக்கு போகும் போது தடையை விதிப்பதோ பிரச்சனை செய்வதோ செய்யாதீர்கள் எனக்கு வேண்டியது அமைதிதான் இதையெல்லாம் செய்யாதீர்கள் அவர்கள் சுடுகாட்டுக்கு போகும் பாதையை உடைத்து வைப்பதோ முள்வேலி போட்டு வைப்பதோ செய்யாதீர்கள் எனக்கு வேண்டியது அமைதிதான் யாரும் அடித்துக் கொள்ளாதீர்கள் இந்த வீட்டு பசங்கள்லாம் அந்த வீட்டு பொண்ணுங்களோட பேசுறாங்க அப்படின்னு நான் சொல் நான் சொல்லல யாரோ சொல்றாங்க அதையெல்லாம் கேட்டு அந்த வீட்டு பசங்களை காலேஜுக்கு செல்லும் போது கையை காலை உடைப்பதோ மண்டையை உடைப்பதோ செய்யாதீர்கள் இந்த வீட்டு பெண்கள் கல்லூரிக்கு செல்லும் போது வம்பிழுப்பதோ பிரச்சனை செய்வதோ செய்யாதீர்கள் எனக்கு தேவை அமைதிதான் யாரும் அடித்துக் கொள்ளாதீர்கள் இந்த மேடையில் நான் பேசும் போதே சிலர் உருமுகிறார்கள் சிலர் எழுந்து நிற்கிறார்கள் அவர்கள் உங்களுக்கு எதிரானவர்கள் என்று அவர்களை கல்லால் விட்டு அடிப்பதோ அவர்களை உதைப்பதோ செய்து விடாதீர்கள் இந்த மேடையில் இந்த நிகழ்ச்சி நடந்து கொண்டிருக்கும் பொழுது எதுவும் தெரியாத போல் அமை அமைதியாக ஒருத்தர் கம்ப்யூட்டர் முன் அமர்ந்திருக்கலாம் அவர்கள் கூட உங்களுக்கு எதிரியானவர்கள் என்று அவர்களை அடிப்பதோ உடைப்பதோ உதைப்பதோ செய்யாதீர்கள் உங்கள் வீடுகளை கொளுத்திக் கொள்ளாதீர்கள் எனக்கு வேண்டியது அமைதி அமைதி அந்த பேசின வீடியோ போட்டது யாரா 
அப்படி தான் நான் போடுவேன் நான் அவனையே போடுவேன்டா நான் அசிங்க அசிங்கமா போடுவேன்டா நான் இப்போ எதையாவது போடணுமே நான் போனையே போடுவேன்டா போக <laughs> கூடாது <laughs> 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 சாரி சார் ரொம்ப ட்ரை பண்ணி பார்த்தேன் ஆனால் போக முடியல என்ன கொடுமடாது சாதாரண இந்த பாறைக்காக இப்படி அடிச்சுக்கிறீங்களே நாங்க இங்க இருந்து ஆளே கிடையாது தெரியுமா நாங்க எவ்வளவு பெரிய மலை மேல இருந்தோம் தெரியுமா பல வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாடி நடந்தப்போ உருவானதுதான் இந்த மலை நாங்க மலை மேல இருந்தோம் எங்க மேல எத்தனை எவ்வளவு பேர் நடந்திருக்காங்க தெரியுமா எத்தனை விஷயம் நடந்திருக்கு தெரியுமா டைனோசர்லாம் நடந்திருக்கு கழுகுங்க உட்காந்துருக்கு அப்புறம் ஒரு நிலநடுக்கம் வந்த போது நாங்க உருண்டு கீழே வந்துட்டோம் 
எங்க மேல எத்தனை அங்க எவ்வளவு உதவி பண்ணிருக்கோம் தெரியுமா எங்க மேல எத்தனை பேர் துணி காய போட்டிருக்காங்க தெரியுமா எங்க மேல எத்தனை காதல் ஜோடிகள் உட்காந்து கதை பேசிருக்காங்க தெரியுமா எத்தனை குழந்தைங்க எங்க மேல ஏறி விளையாண்டு இருக்காங்க தெரியுமா எத்தனை பாட்டி எங்க மேல வத்தல் காய போட்டிருக்காங்க தெரியுமா இவ்வளவு நடந்த இவ்வளவு உபயோகமான இந்த பாறைக்காக இப்படி சண்டை போட்டுக்கிறீங்களே அதாவது பாறையில கூட ஈனம் இருக்கு ஆனா உங்க மனசுல பாறை தான் இருக்கு அந்த பாறைக்கு சண்டை போடுறதுக்கு பதிலா உங்க மனசுல இருக்கிற பாறைய தூக்கி எரிஞ்சு சந்தோஷமா வாழுங்க நமக்கு இன்னைக்கு தேவை எதுவுமே இல்லை இன்டெக்ரல் நேஷனல் இன்டெகிரேஷன் கம்யூனல் ஹார்மனி எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு நீ நானு ஒண்ணு எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு அட நீ நானு ஒண்ணு எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு நீ நானு ஒண்ணு எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு இப்படி மாத்தி மாத்தி கொண்டு நம்ம ஆக போற மண்ணு மாத்தி மாத்தி கொண்டு நம்ம ஆக போற மண்ணு நீ நானு ஒண்ணு எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு நீ நானு ஒண்ணு எதுக்கு நமக்கு கண்ணு நம்மல்ல பலருக்கு கிடைக்கல ஒரு பண்ணு Kail Theater we like to introduce our uh, team members Majesh Majesh he is an aspiring actor Revathi classical dancer short film producer and theater artist Jaydeep aspiring actor Ketan aspiring actor stand up comedian Vasanth aspiring actor and uh, we wanted to have a younger generation to be part of this play so we made sure two children today apply leave for the school and be part of this play so one is uh, rithvin sixth standard student from don bosco school kavin ninth standard student from madras christian college school. so myself jayachandran i scripted and directed this play thank you so much இப்போ தமிழில் சொல்லணும்னா ரெண்டு பசங்களை இன்றைக்கி ஸ்கூல் கூட லீவ் போட்டு இந்த பிளேயில் நீங்கள் பங்கெடுக்கணும் இது ஏன்னா எதிர்காலத்தில் நீங்கள்லாம் முக்கியமான ஆட்களாக இருப்பீங்க அதனால் இந்த கண்டென்ட் ஒருமைப்பாடு நல்லிணக்கம் போன்ற கண்டென்ட் குழந்தைகள் மனசில் விதைக்கணுன்றதுனால அவங்கள நாங்கள் இந்த நாடகத்தில் பங்கெடுக்க வச்சோம் நன்றி நன்றி சோஷியல் மீடியாவுக்கு இது நம்ம ஜோறு உங்கள் ட்ராமா அடி தோல் தேங்க்யூ இன்டெகிரிட்டி ரிவீல்ஸ் பியூட்டி ஐ கால் அப்பான் Sanju Women's Welfare Association to walk the ramp in different state costume. They have also tried to focus on the integration of the divided Andhra Pradesh.
We have a huge round of applause for these beautiful ladies on stage. Color is doubly bright. Shukriya, Nandri, Dhanyavad, Nanni, Abar. I just said thank you in all Indian languages.
Integrity is the seed for achievement. It is the principle that never fails. I now invite Devapani Ma Mahalir Mandram team to give us a visual treat by their dance performance. Thank you once again. I now, I now invite Devapani Mahler Mandram team to give us a visual treat by their dance performance. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the one that's going to 
இவர்களின் இலக்குவான நடனம் கண்டு கலையும் இன்னும் அதிகமாக கற்றுக்கொள்ள விருப்பம் கொள்ளும் can we have a huge round of applause for this team a nation is united progresses and a nation that is united progresses and flourishes i invite rpm women's welfare association on stage for a performance the lovely ladies from rpm women's welfare association will now be presenting the salutation it is a medley of three songs each a tribute to the living mother the mother goddess and the motherland the songs uirum niye mahishasura mardini and vande matram are all set to music by the oscar winner ar rahman uirum niye is a very emotional song that describes about the value of the mother in everybody's life she gives birth and nurtures her child with her body flesh mind heart and soul from the living mother the dancers move to praise the divine mother sri devi durga in the song mahisha sura martini which sings the praises of her triumph over the de- demon mahisha it is said that the feminine forms of all gods merged as one with durga devi and in all her glory as sri durga she slew the evil asura the next song is from the most famous album vande matram rendered by ar rahman himself This song won him many laurels and critical acclaim for his spirited portrayal of patriotism the words vande matram always imbibes patriotism in every indian and gives pride in being one the dancers show how just saying the name of their motherland makes their heart race and causes waves of emotion it is the generation of the youth who will make the land proud they salute to their motherland and dance with colored clothes that depict the indian tricolor saffron representing courage and sacrifice the white representing peace unity and truth and the green representing the fertility and culture the dancers pay homage to every mother the mother goddess and the mother land
ವಿಶ್ವಿನೋದಿನಿ ನಂದನು ಗಿರಿವರ ವಿಂಧ್ಯ ಶಿರೋಧಿನಿ ವಾಸಿನಿ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಲಾಸಿನಿ ಜಿಷ್ಣು ಭಗವತಿ ಶಿಥಿ ಕಂಠ ಕುಟುಂಬಿನಿ ಭೂರಿ ಕುಟುಂಬಿನಿ ಭೂರಿ ಕೃತಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಮಹಿಷಾಸುರ ಭರ್ತಿನಿ ರಮ್ಯಕ ಭರ್ತಿನಿ ಶೈಲಸುತೆ ಸುರವರ ವರ್ಷಿಣಿ ದುರ್ಧರ ದರ್ಶಿಣಿ ದುರ್ಮುಖ ಮರ್ಷಿಣಿ ಹರ್ಷರತೆ ಭುವನ ಪೋಷಿಣಿ ಶಂಕರ ದೋಷಿಣಿ ಕಲ್ಮಷ ಪೋಷಿಣಿ ಘೋಷರತೆ ತನುಜ ನಿರೋಷಿಣಿ ದಿವಿ ಸುತ ರೋಷಿಣಿ ದುರ್ಮದ ಶೋಷಿಣಿ ಸಿಂಧು ಸುತಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಮಹಿಷಾಸುರ ಭರ್ತಿನಿ ರಮ್ಯಕ ಭರ್ತಿನಿ ಶೈಲ ಸುತೆ celebrate all festivals in every region of every religion that is why it is called incredible india let's give them a huge round of applause a society uh, can you please introduce yourself we are from the rpm women's welfare association our president mrs preeta raj our vice president mrs preeta suresh our executive member shrimati prabhavati and myself vidya lakshmi thank you a society can withstand and sustain only when the minority is merged with the mainstream such a society would be a peaceful and a harmonious one may i now invite society for rights of all women with disabilities for their performance a program for inclusive societies communal harmony 
Aruna ma'am. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Women's Day for all of you. So, taking our morning further, I, on behalf of everyone present here, I heartily welcome all our dignitaries and inaugurators to this uh, program. So, as we all gather here for the program on national integration and communal harmony, it's an immense pleasure for me to be present here on behalf of my organization, SFRAWD, to give you a speech on social inclusion. I, I, I now invite my team to the stage, please. As they arrange themselves, I like to introduce our organization, SFRAWD. What is SFRAWD? It is a society for rights of all women with disabilities, any form of disabilities. And I'm proud to say that Ms. Padma Venkatraman is our patron. Also, we are affiliated to the Women's India Association. What do we do? Our vision is to serve the most marginalized and drowned ordered women and girl children with disabilities to improve their quality of life. We also strive to empower them. We work all over Tamil Nadu by providing educational assistance, skill training program, forming self-dignity group, awareness program, employment opportunities, legal aid services, and livelihood support. Among different types of disabilities, different religion, different caste, different class, culture, and tradition, we work under one umbrella to rejoice the unity and strength among us. Now, I would like to tell the importance of social inclusion of, for the disabled people. With inclusion, people with disabilities feel associated or acknowledged, accepted and recognized for who they are within their communities. They feel worthy of their role in the community, actively participate in the community, have the right to choose their activities based on their personal preferences. They also have the right to choose their social relationship where they choose and share common interests. They have companions and they don't feel left out nor be treated as an inconvenience. When people with disabilities experience these conditions, they are more likely to be happier and healthier. 
in fact social inclusion is an important determinant of health without inclusion people are more likely to experience poor mental health loneliness isolation and poor self esteem social inclusion is like a nectar for the disabled people in the past disabilities had to face lot of social exclusion which did them only harm in place of doing any good to them Exclu exclusion compelled them to remain confined to their own homes and special institutes for example the blind had to live with the blind the deaf had to be confined with other deaf people it didn't do any good to them they were deprived of interacting with the enabled people and learn adaptation to the challenges of life this deteriorated their condition and they couldn't learn achieve and accomplish much however the modern times are different social inclusion of the disabled is not only scientifically right but the collective consciousness of the people favors this theory they learn their ways of life and adapt to them no wonder the disabled people have been successfully working shoulder to shoulder with the enabled people they work with them learn with them play with them share their joys and sorrows with them this social inclusion has made their life more meaningful and fulfilling purposeful in conclusion it can be said social inclusion of disabled people is not only scientifically and logically correct but it's human and more virtuous why am i here because people with disabilities are more likely to experience adverse socio economic outcomes such as less education less levels of employment poor health in, uh, health outcomes and higher poverty rates children with disabilities are lacking access to basic services such as assistive technologies assistive infrastructure access to resource personnel recreational programs and extracurricular activities barrier to full social and economic inclusion of people with disability also include inaccessible physical uh, environment and transportation the unavailability of assistive devices technologies non adapted means of communication gaps in service delivery discriminatory prejudice and stigma in the society we agree that disabled people have lot of opportunities by the government provided by the government and other public sectors sorry private sectors but the attitude that these people hold towards the society doesn't really help them to achieve more you know make use of the available opportunities because they face lot of social hurdle in the form of prejudice discrimination and avoidance they become an object of pity when they are in the group what do these people need disabled people have basic requirements to ensure equality for all within our society they require full access to the environment an accessible transport system technical aids and equipments accessible and adaptable houses personal assistance and support inclusive education and training an adequate income equal opportunities for employment appropriate and accessible information advocacy counseling appropriate and accessible healthcare accessibility strengthens our transit system and it is a right thing to do because as a conduit to employment opportunity culture and community transit should give all members of the public a reliable way to travel an accessible system benefit all of us because at some point many people will find getting around more challenging it could be because we use wheelchair or have a vision or hearing impact or or elderly or have trouble climbing stairs or have a cognitive disability or have a baby in a stroller or it could be any number of challenges that that may be that we may face alone we cannot do anything and we can do very very little but together we can do so much as we all gathered here for a social sorry a program on national uh, uh, integration communal harmony peace and strength i request each and every one of you to join hands with us to achieve our goals for social inclusion you and me cannot be a change maker but a society together can make a impossible possible thank you thank you so much for this opportunity
There is no greater disability in society than the inability to see a person as more. Thank you so much. Art is a form of imitation. Mime is one such art form which creatively brings out the shades of human life. Let's watch a mime on communal harmony by members of Jyoti Madhar Sangam, which is the need of the hour. Good afternoon to one and all. Now, we are going to play a mime drama on the communal harmony. Communal harmony through a divine newborn baby. The title of the miming drama is Divine Baby. Communal harmony. What is communal harmony? It's nothing but people of different religious, caste, greed, sex with a different social status live together in the society with love and peace. Now we are going to present a lovely program to highlight the importance of communal harmony. Now the miming starts. Due to heavy rain. Due to heavy rain with a cyclone storm, the roads are indented and trees are uprooted. The roads are drunted and trees are uprooted. As the rain stopped, as the rain stopped, the traffic on the road resumed with a total confusion and chose. Oh, a cyclist comes. A cyclist comes. He can't move. A Punjabi lady comes in two wheeler. She is also not able to move her bike. Now a Jain lady comes in a car. All of them, all of them trying to move the tree, but they couldn't. Who 
ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇಷ್ಟು ಬದ್ನಿ ನಮೈ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿಸ್ಟ್ ಮೈ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ದೇ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಗೋ ಟು ದೇರ್ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆಫೀಸ್ ಮೈ ಗುಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಡ್ಮಿಸ್ಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಎ ಚೋಸ್ ಎ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ವಿತ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೆಗ್ನೆಂಟ್ ವುಮೆನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಟ್ರ್ಯಾಪ್ಡ್ a family with a pregnant lady comes and trapped in the traffic and the road jam how would they reach the hospital the pregnant lady struggles in the traffic how would they reach the hospital in the situation and how can she deliver the baby now a miracle happens a couple from the meenakshi temple nearby noticed the plight of the pregnant lady ಪಂಜಾಬಿ ಲೇಡಿ ಕಾಲ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಬೈ ಅಂಡ್ ಶಿ ಟುಕ್ ದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ನರ್ಸ್ ಕೇಮ್ let's see what's going to happen the delivery is going to happen in the meenakshi temple we'll wait and see which baby is born wow wow clock sound is hearing wow a beautiful girl child born a beautiful girl child born can you guess the divine can, can you guess the name of the divine baby no 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 there are so many religions in the my in the in the area punjabi girls and a christian doctor and a prayerful brahmin priest can you guess can anyone guess the name of the child no 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 the grandma the grandma put the name of the baby is meena mary begum the name of the child is meena mary begum no now the environment the green tree it enjoys the baby and she gives sweets to all thank you
Hope you all have enjoyed our drama. Please give your hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please don't forget the name Meena Mary Begum. You asked us all about the name of the baby. So, uh, we would like to ask the age of the youngsters gathered yeah. here. <laughs> Can you please uh, introduce yourself, ma'am? The actors, Punjabi lady, Badmini, Jain, sorry, Jain lady, uh, Mrs. Badmini, and uh, the Muslim. Aungongle <laughs> Saltuma. Ah, uh, Badmini age 60 plus. We na plus leya na bawachil na adik mela na kiri le. And uh, Saraswati, Saraswati na pati yara. Ah, uh, 56 sir. Uh, another Saraswati ma'am, 75. Ah, uh, Kalpana 50 plus, 50 plus. Ah, uh, Vijaya Tulasi Raman, 69. Ah, uh, Badma Baskar, 76. The youngest and uh, Krishna Veni, 64. Uh, Chandrika, 65. And the very youngest lady, Alamel Sharma, 81. 81. And, uh, and uh, Geeta Segar, 55. And myself, Lakshmi Rao Kumar. I am, ah, sorry, sorry, on the green, I have heard it. Bhavani, uh, she is 63. Unbelievable. I thought she is 45 plus. And myself, Lashmi Ravukumar, 52 years. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Age is only a number. We count until we are old enough to know that it doesn't count. So, can, shall we give a round of applause to the 20 plus on stage? As we approach to the end of the eventful celebration, may I now request Ms. Bhuma Srinivasan to deliver the vote of thanks. My pronouns. My pronouns to one and all present here. On behalf of Women's Indian Association and All India Women's Conference, I would like to thank the National Foundation for Integration and Communal Harmony, Government of India, for sponsoring this seminar in Chennai. I express my sincere thanks to Mrs. Sheila Kakde, President AWC, for accepting our invitation to be the chief guest of this seminar and honoring us with the gracious presence today. Thank you, ma'am. I extend my generous thanks to our beloved Mrs. Nandrida Krishna, patron of WIA and director of CPR Environment Center for her valuable speech on national integration and communal harmony. It is always a pleasure and an honor to have you, ma'am, in our programs. We have been fortunate to have a very enthusiastic member, member in charge of national integration, New Delhi, Mrs. Manju Kak. I take this opportunity to thank you, ma'am, for bringing this seminar to WIA Chennai by getting sponsorship from National Foundation for Integration and Communal Harmony. You are always an inspiration and motivation source for all of us. Thank you, ma'am. Our respected president of WIA, Ms. Badma Venkatraman, and honorary secretary, Ms. Bhargavi Devendra, deserve a special mention for guiding and motivating us like a catalyst in all our activities. Both supported, encouraged us to do our best in organizing this seminar. My heartful thanks to you, both president, ma'am, and secretary, ma'am. It is my privilege to thank Dr. Lata Rajendran, Secretary and Correspondent of MGR Jane College of Arts and Science for Women, for her gracious presence and her willingness to permit us to use this hall for the function. On behalf of WIA, I extend my sincere thanks to the Chairman of the College, Dr. Kumar Rajendran, and 
Dr. Lata Rajendran. Thank you, ma'am. My sincere thanks to the principal of Dr. MGR Jane College, Dr. Mani Meghlai, Vice Principal Dr. Lakshmi Balaji, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dr. Shanti Lakshmi, Dean of Academics, Dr. Abhita Sabhapati, Dean of Students, for their help and support for various stages of this seminar. Words are not enough to express my thanks to them. Thank you so much, all the four pillars of this college. I thank the teaching staff of the students, the student volunteers, the youth members of this distinguished institution for all the help extended to us. Our thanks are due to each and every member of the various teams and the branches which presented a very colorful, meaningful cultural program. The dance performance of this college was also very wonderful. The stage play by the youth, Karagatam, Mailatam, the mime by the branches, the speech saluting the mother of, by the student, prayer song by the students, and also the different state costumes by Sanjeev Women's Welfare Association. It was very interesting and lively to each and every one of us. Uh, now we feel that every year we have to have so many programs for our branches so that the talents can come out. It is not possible to thank everyone from our branches for such an appreciating involvement and the willingness they have shown for the success of the program. Let us congratulate ourselves and dear friends and you all of you pat yourselves at the back for your wonderful program. WIA thanks each and every one of you personally. I extend my special thanks to the winners of Youth Achiever Award, Vinisha and Jayalakshmi. Young ladies, we are very proud of your achievement. An event like this cannot be organized over a night. We have been fortunate to be backed by a team of very dedicated staff in WIA under the leadership of Mr. Pandian, guided by Mr. our president and secretary, I thank each and every one of the office staff and the Pandian's team for their support and their uh, ever always ready to willing. Mr. Pandian will stay also here in our uh, campus. I'm very thankful to the photographer and the videographer for covering the day's program and arranging for uploading the program live on YouTube. Special thanks to Mr. Yuvraj for the video coverage and everything. Last but not least, I thank Sharja, for the comparing and their willingness to do it, it was exceedingly good. Thank you. Very sweet. Thank you so much, ma'am. I request all of you to join us for la national anthem. Before that, I invite uh, Pre Prema Sita Raman. All of you, please stay back till the national anthem is over. There is only Shanti Nila Vendum. After that, national anthem. Thank you all once again. A very big thank you on behalf of WIA. I thank once again Sheila Ji and uh, Kul, Kuljit Kaur and uh, Regna Beham. Those they, though they are not here, we would like to thank them also and Manjika especially for bringing this program once again. Thank you so much. Yeah. When Shanti Nila Vendam, uh, when she is singing, all those who are in different costumes, uh, please come onto the stage. Please come to the stage. Mm. And the gypsy group, Irking Lama. Please come. Yellow one. The is the full arc on a number nursing students. Mm. Shall I start? Start. Nataji. 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 Sarjana. 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 Sarj
வெள்ள மறைச்சிடுவோம் எங்கும் சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் ஆத்ம சக்தி ஓங்க வேண்டும் உலகிலே சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் ஆத்ம சக்தி ஓங்க வேண்டும் உலகிலே சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் காந்தி மகாத்மா கட்டளை அதுவே கருணை ஒற்றுமை கதிரொளி பரவி காந்தி மகாத்மா கட்டளை அதுவே கருணை ஒற்றுமை கதிரொளி பரவி சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் திடம் தரும் மகிம்சா யோகினம் தந்தை ஆத்மானந்தம் பெறவே திடம் தரும் மகிம்சா யோகினம் தந்தை ஆத்மானந்தம் பெறவே கடமை மரம் அவர் கடத்தி கரம்பளர்போ கடமை மரமோம் அவர் கடல் தீர்ப்போ கலமதில்லாரம்பளர்போ எங்கும் சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் ஆத்ம சக்தி போக வேண்டும் உலகிலே சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் உலகிலே சாந்தி நிலவ வேண்டும் எங்கும் சாந்தி எங்கும் சாந்தி எங்கும் சாந்தி எங்கும் சாந்தி தேங்க்யூ அந்த ஃபேன்லாம் ஆஃப் பண்ணிடலாம் புறா விட போகிறாங்க இல்லை அவ்வளோ தூரம் போகாது சரி பார்க்கலாம் ஓகே இட்ஸ் நாட் கோயிங் ஓகே ஜனகனமநாயக ஜய ஹே பாரத பாக்கியவிதா பஞ்சாப சிந்து குஜராத் மராட்டா திராவிட உட்கலவங்கா விந்திய இமாச்சல யமுனா கங்கா உச்சல ஜலதிதரங்கா தவ சுபநாமே ஜாகே 
तव शुभ आशीष माहे गाये तब जय गाता जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे जय हिंद branch members after lunch you have to assemble here our president would like to our awc president would like to meet all the branch members after lunch please come here thank you special thanks to bhuma ma'am